Hey everyone, in this video, I want to show uh, another form of authentication. Uh, so we're actually going to take a look at Keycloak, um, specifically OpenID Connect with Keycloak. And now I think Keycloak is pretty awesome. Uh, it supports not just OpenID Connect, but it even supports SAML. Uh, so I'll do a video a little bit later on, on setting up um, Keycloak with as a SAML identity provider. Uh, with Cortex as the, again as the service provider, but today we're going to look at the OpenID Connect side of things. Uh, last video was all about SAML using ADFS. That's the preferred method um, for using SAML, uh, primarily because it's the most likely pattern that folks will want to use. Um, for OpenID Connect, there are a lot of different options. Um, Keycloak is the one that I've chosen because it's it's really easy for me to set up in kind of a dev environment, which is why I'm going to show it to you. Uh, I think it's a great platform just across the board. It's kind of like an open source Okta. Um, so uh, Okta should work uh, as well. There might be some modifications needed in order to get Okta to actually behave properly. Um, we can work through those uh, if you uh, contact me. And then of course there's there's other uh, kind of platform specific uh, providers that do OpenID Connect, like uh, Google and uh, you know the Microsoft Graph and, and that sort of thing. Um, I haven't tried those, but you know OpenID Connect is an open standard, so they probably all work approximately the same way. Um, but again, we might have to play some games. Uh, one of the things that I was beating my head against with Okta a couple nights ago was um, Okta wants all the usernames to be email addresses. That's not always the case in, in Shareable and it's certainly not the case in the demo database. Um, so depending on the format that your usernames and your email addresses use, uh, we, we might have to play some tricks and, and there might actually be a little bit of development that I have to do in order to, in order to support uh, some of these, these authentication scenarios. So anyway, uh, all that's details, all that, all that aside, uh, if you're interested in what I'm doing here, obviously like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. I think something like 94% of people who watch my videos are uh, not subscribed to the channel. Um, subscribing to the channel uh, not only boosts that number, but it also means that you'll get notified of all the new features that I'm adding to Cortex. Cortex obviously isn't done. Um, it is ready to be used, but I'm continuing to add new features, uh, making it even more useful for the, you know, the archival and uh, compliance uh, use cases. Um, every conversation I have with, uh, with folks who want to use Cortex, I come up with a new idea or they give me a new idea of something to add to the system to make it that much easier. Um, Right, because there's, you know, Sharewell being designed for day-to-day -day operations doesn't necessarily optimize for uh, for the that compliance side of things. Um, so I have the opportunity to kind of explore new territory and build new features uh, that are kind of unique to that to that use case. So we're already four minutes in. I better get to the demo before we 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 make this uh, video even longer than the SAML one. Uh, so. Let's do that. Oh, by the way, every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific, I host a uh, little uh, Cortex users group uh, sort of thing. Um, this week, I actually might not be there. So, uh, you know, don't show up this week. But uh, if every other week besides this week, um, show up. There's links down in the video description for all that information. Let's get to the demo for real this time. All right. So here is my Keycloak setup, and I'm actually going to go through even what I would consider the prerequisites, um, just to show kind of the, the truly the end-to-end -end process. Um, so I'm gonna create a brand new realm, which in Keycloak is kind of the um, domain, uh, if you wanna think of it from the, the Active Directory perspective. It's uh, it, not really application, it's kind of the, the set of users and groups and permissions and, and that sort of thing. Um, so I'm gonna just go create realm, 
and I'm going to name it demo. Yes, I'll enable it, create it. And in just a couple seconds, it will actually have created the realm. And that's basically all I need to do um, from the realm perspective. Uh, and the reason that I'm doing this is to show that if you have a realm in Keycloak, you don't have to do any customization to it. It will work for Cortex out, out of the box. Um, yeah, but in order to log into this realm, I actually need a user. So let's create a new user and we'll say the username is CSD admin. Um, the username is the important part because that's what uh, gets used to look up in uh, in Cortex. Uh, let's uh, give an email address of csdadmin at synapsesoftware.com because why not? And we'll just fill in some stuff here. CSD admin email is verified, so it doesn't try to send me an email because that email doesn't actually exist. We'll create, and then we'll go ahead and create a password here. And the password is just going to be password. We're going to keep that as the permanent password. All right, so now we have a realm, we have a user, we have a password set for that user. Let's go create a client and a client is basically how you tell Keycloak uh, how to talk to the the service provider, the um, the actual application that's going to use Keycloak to authenticate. So we'll create a client. And notice I mentioned uh, before that Keycloak does both SAML and OpenID Connect. Today we're going to do OpenID Connect, so I'll leave that selected. Client ID is you can see I've put in some absolute garbage there before. Um, Kind of wish all my autocomplete uh, stuff wasn't wasn't uh, just littering the uh, the, the form fill-ins here. Um, but the client ID is basically something that you get to set uh, that uh, identifies the application that uses the Keycloak authentication information uh, to Keycloak. So in this case. I might just say Cortex. There's actually a place to specify this in Cortex, but we'll just call it Cortex. Name is Cortex, and feel free to give it a description if you want. Um, we'll hit next. This toggle needs to be set to on. Uh, if you don't set it to on, we don't get a client secret. Um, basically, this is how Keycloak enforces that the application trying to use Keycloak to log in uh, is, in fact, an application that is allowed to use Keycloak to log in. Um, so leave that on. This is all these defaults are correct. Um, and here, you can fill these in. None of them are strictly necessary. Um, this one in particular, and this one in particular, valid redirect URIs and web origins, uh, can help further restrict the, uh, the kind of the places that can redirect to Keycloak to authenticate. Um, so while you're testing things out, you might want to use wildcards here. I'm going to be running Cortex on my local host. So rather than typing in local host in a port, I'm just going to hit, I'm just going to provide a wildcard just so that uh, everything is, is valid. But for production, you want to actually set a valid a redirect URI um, basically HTTPS, your domain name, uh, and then splat is fine. Uh, if you're running Cortex on a, on a subdirectory, uh, you might want to do something like that. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to do star, uh, and then plus, and then plus, sorry, that's wrong. That should be a star. Um, Star is a magical value that basically means everywhere. Plus, in this field is a magical value that means anything was that was valid here, I believe. You could click that, and uh, I think that's what that says. So I'm going to hit save. 
And now I have a client. And now I need, I think just one piece of information. Uh, we have the client ID, we got to set that. We need, not the keys, credentials. So client ID and secret, we have the client secret. I'm going to copy this to my clipboard. Um, I could show you what this is. I'm going to delete this client anyway, so it's not like, you know, posting it publicly uh, on the internet is, is really going to make that much of a difference. Um, but we're going to drop over to Cortex's appsettings.json. Uh, and if you've read the Cortex documentation, uh, link down in the video description below, uh, anytime it talks about configuring something in Cortex, this is the file that it talks about. Uh, it, there is a way to do this with uh, environment variables, but if you're running Cortex with IIS, that's not really an option. The only way to configure Cortex is by editing this file. Um, so we're going to ignore most of these settings, except when we get down to uh, authentication. And the authentication type is going to be key cloak. Um, this actually sets up some, some defaults that are kind of key cloak specific. Uh, it makes it a little more magical. Um, client ID is what we set for the client ID. So we set it as Cortex. If you wanted to call it something different, that's fine. Just make sure it, it matches on, on both sides. And then the client secret is whatever I just copied to the clipboard, which is going to be a nasty string of uh, mostly letters, but some numbers in there as well. And the authority, I want to see if I can pull this from the UI somewhere. Um, it might. Uh, show up in realm settings. Uh, I mean, it is in there, but you don't want to look at that. Let me see if it's. Uh, I don't know if it actually is in there. Uh, but I happen to know what it is off the top of my head, actually, from my cheat sheet over here. It is. Let me pull up the config again. Here we go. So the authority is going to be HTTPS and then your key cloak server slash realms. Slash, and then the name of the realm, and I called mine demo. Um, now, my key cloak server is actually auth.colony.com. Um, and uh, a note here is that earlier versions of key cloak, I forget what exactly version it, this change happened, but earlier versions of key cloak actually have slash auth before slash realms. Um, but for the version of Keycloak that I'm running, which is at time of recording the latest, which is uh, 24.0.1, uh, it's it's just the uh, the URL or the host name slash realms slash the name of the realm. So with that, with all that in place, I can save it. And my cat's going to help uh, edit some things. I'm going to jump over to my dev environment and actually start the process. So in just a few seconds, I'll be able to pull this up in a web browser. And We'll give it just a few seconds. It's going to say it can't be reached right now because it's it's actually still building. Uh, all right, it's built and now it's going to start running. All right, I just refreshed the browser and there we go. It's sent me back, sent me over to Keycloak. And at this point, I can log in with the username and password that I set. So username was CSD admin. Uh, I don't think case matters on username, but it obviously does on the password, which is, again, password all lowercase. We sign in. We get redirected back to Cortex. And 
in just a minute, it'll pull a bunch of information from the, the database. Cortex does take a few seconds to spin up on the first, uh, the first few requests, or the first request, uh, because it does have to load basically what, you, what you'll remember as the definition catalog. Uh, it basically has to load all that uh, into memory uh, on the first, the first time it, it launches. So here we go. It's spinning up. It's spinning up. And I think my browser has just given up. So we'll actually try that again. Localhost. And it's redirecting to Keycloak. There we go, and we're back, and we're logged in. Logged in as CSD admin, and you know, let's let's go ahead and, and browse and see what uh, what business objects we could see. Well, all of them because we're logged in as CSD admin. So that's that's basically it. We are now logged in uh, from Keycloak uh, as CSD admin through that user we've defined. All of that. Uh, information that we set, the client we created, the realm we created. Uh, that's basically it. And I do think I came in under my time for the SAML video, where it's 16, 17 minutes now. The SAML video, I think, was close to 20 minutes. Um, so if you liked what you saw here, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Remember, the Cortex Users Group every Tuesday, except for this Tuesday, uh, at 10 a.m. Pacific time, um, link down in the video description. There's links down below to the demo site uh, that I usually show in these videos. Um, that is configured to uh, to use to use Keycloak. That's what I'm using to authenticate that demo site. Uh, all three users that I have set up, they all have the same user uh, same password of lowercase password. Um, CSD admin Emma and Claire. And uh, there's also links down there for the documentation site, which isn't updated with how to configure authentication quite yet. But as soon as Cortex 1.3, which all of this is a part of, is released, that documentation site will be updated with the authentication documentation. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Feel free to comment down on the video, um, you know, down below. Uh, there's links in the description to schedule time on my calendar, to join the, the users group, to download Cortex, to see how to configure all this stuff. Um, all the links are down in the video description for anything you might want to know about Cortex. And if it isn't there, ask in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Possibly before, but definitely next week.